Hello and namaste. My name is Eddie Stern and I am a yoga teacher from New York City. I've been practicing and studying and teaching yoga for over 30 years now. And this presentation is based on the work that I've been doing with Dr. William Bushell, who is one of the leading researchers and scientific investigators of yogic practices. He has been studying and researching yoga and its effects on the human body with adepts from India and Tibet for well over 30 years. And he was a researcher affiliated with MIT and Harvard and Columbia. Uh, Dr. Bushell published a paper in the Journal of Alternative and Complementary Medicine this past summer on yoga as a potential adjunctive treatment for COVID-19. And it was an extremely well received paper with many uh, partners and co-authors on the paper, including people from the Harvard School of Health and many others. Uh, Bill and I, Dr. Bushell and I consequently wrote a follow-up paper that was published in Psychology Today and this was on yoga as an enhanced form of proning. So this presentation will be based on the yoga enhanced proning that Dr. Bushell and I have been discussing and writing about for the past several months. And the reason why Dr. Bushell suggested this idea to me was that there was a large body of evidence that was growing to show that proning which is a particular body that the body is put into, um, can help increase oxygen levels that are rapidly decreasing. And one of the uh, problems that COVID was presenting with in the early days was something called silent hypoxia, where the patient would come into the hospital with very low oxygen levels, dangerously low oxygen levels, but not realize it because their body was not sending signals to the brain that they needed more oxygen. And so to prevent intubation, the doctors would take patients off from their backs and put them onto their belly on a special machine so that they could begin breathing more into the back of their lungs. So when we're lying on our backs for long periods of time, uh, we have less, less surface area of lungs in the front of the body and more surface area in the back of the body. And as well, gravity is going to be working against us on that smaller surface area. So it's harder to oxygenate the blood. But when you turn the body over, you have greater access to the back lungs and you can re-oxygenate the body much more quickly. So there are many yoga poses and breathing practices which help to re-oxygenate the blood. And Dr. Bushell proposed to me that we try to find what these practices are and put them together in a protocol. And so that's largely what this presentation will be based on. Um, there are going to be about three different segments that we're going to discuss, and I will describe each of the benefits of the poses as we go through them. Uh, and as well, refer to the um, origination of where I learned these practices at the same time. So we're going to begin with uh, the first practice, which is called Brahma Mudra. And you can do this either sitting on the floor, sitting in a chair, or standing up, uh, whichever happens to be comfortable for you. I'm going to demonstrate everything from a sitting down location today, just because it will be easier to film. So there are several different versions of the Brahma Mudra. This particular version is taught at Kaivalyadham and was propagated by Swami Kuvalyananda. But you'll see some slight variations of this practice depending on the school of yoga. Now, the area that this practice is stimulating are going to be the teeth, the tongue, the jaw, as well as the eyes. And all of these areas are innervated by something called the trigeminal nerve. And the trigeminal nerve goes into the tongue, into the teeth, into the jaw, into the area of the eyes, the ears, and also part of the um, nasal region. 
And one of the things that the trigeminal nerve does, aside from controlling the muscular movement of these areas, is it's uh, intimately related with the production of nitric oxide and melatonin. Nitric oxide is a molecule produced by the body which has a mild bronchodilator effect, which means it opens up the air pathways. Uh, as well, it is an antiviral, antimicrobial, and antifungal. And it's produced in the nasal cavity, as well as in the endothelial tissue of the heart and other areas as well. And melatonin is also an antioxidant and an anti-inflammatory as well as being important for regulating the sleep cycles. So right here in the area of the whole orofacial cavity, we have the, all of these mechanisms, which are very important for not only uh, preventing incoming pathogens, but also regulating inflammatory levels in the body. And one of the things we know from COVID is that it sends our inflammatory um, mechanisms into overdrive. Uh, which leads to a lot of breakdown of important structures of the body and uh, physiological mechanisms. So we're going to start with the Brahma Mudra. And the first thing you're going to do is lower your chin down towards your chest and gaze at the tip of your nose. Breathe comfortably here. And now lightly bite down on your teeth. And then we'll lift the head up and we'll lean the head gently back and look in between the eyebrows as the head goes back. And lightly bite down on the teeth. And then bring the head to center. Turn your head to look over your left shoulder and look out of the corner of the eyes and lightly bite down on the teeth. Breathing. And turn the head back to center. Look over your right shoulder. Lightly bite down on the teeth. Look out at the corner of the eyes. And bring the head back to center. Okay, so we'll try that one more time. There'll be four head positions, three eye positions, and we're lightly biting down on the teeth, including the front teeth. And you can also press your tongue against the roof of the mouth. Let's try one more time. Rest your chin down, keep breathing, gaze at the tip of your nose, lightly bite your teeth. Press your chin right in between the juggler notch if you're able to. And then lift the head. Gaze to look in between the eyebrows and put your head back. Lightly bite the teeth and breathe. And come back to center. Turn to look over your left shoulder. Lightly bite down on the teeth. Look out of the corner of the eyes. back to center, look over your right shoulder, lightly bite down on the teeth, look out of the corner of the eyes, and back to center, relax the jaw and breathe through the nose for two breaths, long slow inhalation, and a long slow exhalation. Again, slow inhalation and a slow exhalation. Okay, so this practice can be done three or four times. We did it two times today. And again, you always want to be lightly biting down on the teeth, not only to stimulate the trigeminal nerve, but also to strengthen the neck muscles. Otherwise, a lot of pressure can go into the cervical vertebrae of the neck and it can be uncomfortable. But by applying pressure in the jaw, you engage these side neck muscles and then you support the neck nicely. Okay, so the next practice we're going to do is a simple side bend. Uh, if you know the Trikonasana position, you can also do Trikonasana here. 
uh, but today we're just going to do a simple side bend. This will be to open the side of the body and also to begin to stimulate the lower part of the ribs uh, on both sides of the body where the diaphragm is attaching. And the diaphragm, of course, is our breathing muscle and it becomes weakened through lack of use. So now we're going to stimulate or bring some uh, interoceptive awareness to the side ribs and to the diaphragm muscle. So place your left fingertips on the floor to the side of your body and bring your right hand out to the side. Inhale the arm up over the head and just lengthen up through the body coming straight for a moment and then exhale the arm down. This is just to lengthen the sides of the ribs. Bring your right fingertips to the floor. Inhale your left arm straight up. Lengthen up. And exhale the arm down. We we'll do that one more time each side. Inhale the right arm up. Lengthen straight up. Lengthen your waist. And exhale the arm down so the fingertips come to the floor. And inhale the left arm up. And exhale the arm down. Relax the arms and shoulders for a moment. You can shake the shoulders out. And now we will go into the side bend. So bring your left finger fingertips to the floor. Inhale the arm up. And now exhale, lean your body to the side a little and walk your fingers a little bit away. And keep lengthening through your upper arm and then gaze towards your left hand and breathe. One, two, three. Inhale the arm up, come to sit. Bring your right fingertips to the floor. Inhale the left arm up. Exhale, lean to the side and then walk your hand a little bit away from you. Stretch through your left arm. Gaze towards your right hand and breathe. Imagine you're breathing into your left lungs. One. Two, open the chest. Three. And then bring the arm down, come back to center. We're doing everything twice. So walk your left fingertips away. Inhale the right arm up. Exhale, lean to the side. Walk your hand a little bit away. Look towards your left hand. Open your chest. Stretch through your arms and breathe. One. Two. Three. And come back up to center. Bring your right hands to the floor. Walk them away. Inhale the left arm up. Stretch to the side. Walk your hand a little bit further away. Look to the right hand. Open the chest and breathe. One. Two. And three. And now inhale, come up. Come back to sit. Close the eyes and breathe two times. Inhaling through the nose. And exhaling through the nose. One more, inhaling comfortably. And exhaling. Okay, so now we're gonna do one simple posture to help open the back lungs. And this can be done with a pillow, if you like. You can put your pillow in front of your body and you're going to lean forward and rest your forehead down on the pillow. And then stretch your arms on the sides of the pillow And then breathe into the back lungs three times. One, this can also be done with the hands resting on the pillow if that's more comfortable. Two. Three. And then come back up to sit. We're going to repeat that again. And all these poses can be held for as long as comfortably possible for you. We're starting with three breaths today. But if you want to do five or eight or 10, that's no problem if it's comfortable for you. So in this pose, particularly the lower back lungs 
by the lower back ribs in the area of the kidneys are going to be a little bit more open. So as you breathe, try to feel your back lower ribs moving. Let's go ahead and bend forward one more time. And place your hands on the pillow or on the floor in front of you. And breathe into your lower back ribs in the area of the kidneys. One. Two. And three. And then bring yourself back up to sit. Hands rest on the knees. And see if now you can feel the back of the body opening a little more as you breathe. Maybe the breath naturally becomes a little longer and smoother. Okay, let's open the eyes. Okay, so uh, now we're gonna take a little poll. And um, the question for you is, does yoga count as a strengthening exercise? Yes or no? So you can think about that for a moment. Think of all the yoga poses you know. And does yoga count as a strengthening exercise? Okay, so remember, when we talk about strengthening in regards to yoga, we're not just talking about strengthening the muscles or the bones. Now yoga definitely does that, but yoga also strengthens the nervous system. It can strengthen immune system function. It strengthens the cardiovascular system, the digestive system, and many of other, our other physiological systems as well. So when we look at yoga as a strengthening practice, we're looking at a holistic strengthening of all of our physiological functions not just the muscles and bones. Okay, so let's move on now to another type of proning practice. We're gonna lie down. Uh, actually, we'll do one strengthening practice and then we'll lie down on the, on the belly. So the strengthening practice we're going to do is the cat-cow position. And this was uh, one of the poses used in the study that Dr. Bushell um, showed to me that um, was shown to increase, increase human beta defenses um, that are released in the saliva. And these are important antiviral molecules that the body releases. Um, so a consistent uh, practice of yoga has been shown to increase these beta defensins in the body. So picking about five different yoga poses a day and doing them is going to help with these antiviral, anti-inflammatory mechanisms. So let's come onto the hands and the knees. This is called the pointing dog going to stretch your right toes to the floor behind you. Push out through your heel and lift up through your chest. And then the right leg is gonna come up off the floor as high as you can comfortably bring it. And if you feel comfortable, stretch your left arm out as well. And gaze forward. We'll breathe here three times. One, two, and three. Bring the hand down and the knee down. Stretch your left toes to the floor behind you and lift your chest. Bring your left leg up in the air. Stretch your right arm out in front of you. If it's not comfortable for you to bring your right arm up, you can just try to lift your back leg up. This is wonderful for the back muscles and to strengthen the back muscles where our breathing occurs. And exhale the hand down and the knee down. Let's stretch the right legs out one more time, the toes on the floor. Lift your chest, bring your right leg up, and either only keep your leg up or bring your hand up as well. And breathe. One, two, and three. And then come down, lower the knee. And then the second time, because we're repeating everything twice, lift the chest. Bring your leg up in the air, and if you're comfortable, stretch your arm forward. You can also keep your fingertips on the floor to balance. One, two, and three. Okay, so this particular pose, let's kind of sit on the knees for a moment, has wonderful strengthening properties for the lower back and also to support the back area of the lungs that again, we're going to be targeting in the proning. So next we're gonna to come to lie on the belly 
and we're going to do one of the great groaning poses called the half makarasana. So you're going to lie on your belly and if you'd like you can take a pillow and put the pillow under your chest, cross your hands and then bring your right knee out to the side and bend your knee at a right angle so your foot is flexed. And then you can rest your head down on the pillow. Okay, so for some people, this is going to be more comfortable taking the pillow and putting your pillow under your knee to give your knee a little bit of support. So you can choose your position either with a pillow or without. And we're going to stay here for about five breaths. Letting the body relax. And as you breathe, you're going to feel that your belly comes into the floor a little, which is going to automatically push into your lower mid back, expanding your back ribs. So allow the belly to fill towards the floor and expand your back ribs. Resting gently, letting the body relax. Okay, now let's straighten your right leg out on the floor behind you and come to do the left side. I'm just going to move the pillow out of the way for this one. Bend your left knee out to the side, point your right toes, and turn your head to look towards the side. Let the belly fill as you inhale and your back ribs expand. Keep your head in any comfortable position, either the chin forward or the chin to the side. Repeating everything twice, let's straighten the left leg out and bend the right knee up and out to the side. You can take your pillow and put it under the knee or put it under the chest if you like. And remember, if the pillow is under the chest, then come right in the middle so your head can rest onto your hands. For some people, this will be more comfortable, for some people, less. So you have your options of a pillow under the knee, the chest or no pillow at all. Slow, deep breathing. And then straighten your leg out. Bend your left knee out to the side and turn your head. Breathe. So now you're going to straighten your leg out on the floor and you're going to remove the pillow, come to lie on your back for a moment. and keep the knees bent. Let your knees come together and rest your hands. And then after you've come to rest on your back, you're gonna put your hands on your belly. And as you inhale, feel the belly rise up into your hands. As you exhale, let the belly come down. Inhale, the belly rises into the hands. Exhale, the belly comes down. Now this time when you inhale and the belly rises up into your hands, keep your hands up where they are. And when you exhale, pull your belly away from your hands. And then inhale, let the belly rise up into the hands again. 
Exhale, the hands stay where they are, but the belly comes down. So you feel the space between your hands and the belly. Do that one more time, inhale. And exhale. Good. Rest your hands on your belly. Move your hands apart so your hands are at your waist. And then walk your hands up a little higher so you feel them on your lower ribs. Now breathe into your lower ribs and feel your ribs push into your hands as you inhale. And as you exhale, let the ribs come back in. So before the belly was coming up and down, and now the ribs are going out and in. So again, inhaling into your ribs, exhaling, inhaling into the ribs, feel the ribs push into your hands, and exhaling. One more, inhale the ribs into the hands. And exhale. Okay, relax your hands down. Rest on the back for a moment. Feeling a sense of calm. And then let's roll over on your side and come back up to sit. So when you come back up to sit again, check in with your breathing. See if you feel a sense of calm and quiet starting to descend through the body and nervous system. And our second poll question now is, um, do you think that yoga helps in healing from post COVID trauma? Okay, so we're coming now to uh, the last practice we're going to do today. Again, this is an abbreviated version of the yoga enhanced proning practice uh, as a behavioral supplemental treatment for COVID. Uh, we have about 10 different things in this practice. We're doing really just five or six of them today. Okay, so the last one we're going to do is the Brahmhari Pranayama. This is the humming breath that you see in the Hatha Yoga text, the humming pranayama. And the way it's done is we inhale and exhale slowly, making a humming sound. Now, first, just to address our second poll question, do you think that yoga can help as a healing mechanism for post-COVID trauma? Um, the answer to this, uh, of course, depends. Uh, the most important things we can do for preventing COVID, of course, is to wear a mask, to practice social distancing, to wash our hands, to get enough sleep, to eat foods that are going to support the health of our physiology, of all the different mechanisms of the body. So all these are the most important preventive things we can do to avoid COVID. But if we do happen to get it uh, and we are in a recovery stage, there are certain practices that have been shown to be helpful for reducing inflammation in the body and strengthening innate immune system function um, and different things that will help us to sleep better, etc. So yoga can be helpful in some cases for helping to support recovery from post-COVID trauma. The last practice we'll do is the Brahmhari Pranayama and this will be done by inhaling through the nose and exhaling making a high-pitched tummy sound. Mm -hmm. You can try this two or three times on your own, and I'll describe a couple of more benefits while you're doing the practice. Uh, humming has been shown to increase the production of nitric oxide, which again is anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, antiviral, and also is a mild bronchodilator. And there are several studies which have been shown, which have shown the efficacy of this particular pranayama. 
and the humming itself is going to be producing this nitric oxide in the nasal cavity. And there's one other addendum that we can do, which is called the Shanmukhi Mudra. And the Shanmukhi Mudra is where we put our thumbs against this part of the ear, the conca of the ear, press in, close the fingers over the eyes, and the ring finger and the pinky come to meet either at the lips or at the corner of the lips. And then we do the pranayama like this. Mm -hmm. benefit of using the Shanmukhi Mudra is that it's stimulating the vagal nerve afferents uh, at the ears and at the eyes and at the corner of the mouth. And the tone of the vagal nerve is very important for not only communication between the brain and all of the visceral organs below the throat, including the heart, the lungs, the diaphragm, the liver, the pancreas, the stomach, and the intestines, but also for controlling inflammatory levels of the body. So this is called vibrotactile stimulation. And the combination of Brahmari Pranayama with the Shamukhi Mudra is a type of vibrotactile stimulation, which has been also shown to stimulate vagal nerve tone. Okay, so the last of the poll questions is, can meditation be done in a sitting position only? Think about that for a moment and think about what meditation means and what it means to you. And then you can answer that poll question. Uh, in the meantime, I'll recap all of these practices. Uh, again, this is from research done by Dr. William Bushell, and it is a protocol that I've um, designed together with him. We have covered the practice of Brahma Mudra, the movements of the neck in four positions. We've covered a side bend to open the side lungs and side ribs. We did a forward bending position seated to open the back lungs to an, open the area where uh, we have a larger surface area of lung tissue. And then we did the pointing dog position to strengthen the back muscles and also to do some uh, light exercise for um, reduction of inflammation and the increase of human beta defensins. And then we did a proning position lying down on the belly, the half makarasana. And then after that, we did abdominal breathing, rib breathing, brahmari pranayama, and shanmukhi mudra. Okay, so that is uh, the recap of the practice today. And yes, meditation is primarily done in a seated position, but there also are forms of walking meditation that are very popular and efficacious as well. So I thank you for your time and I thank the Apollo Hospital for inviting Dr. Bushell and myself on for this short presentation as yoga of yoga enhanced proning for the treatment of post-COVID trauma. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti.